The Texas Longhorns are coming home for the final game of the regular season versus Texas Tech. Why is the Red Raider offense inconsistent? How has their defense improved? And most importantly, can Texas secure the final win and guarantee itself a spot in the Big 12 championship? After the show, Inside Texas is the best spot to stay up to date on your favorite football team. Constant game analysis, breaking recruiting news, and insider notes about the team are dropping daily. Subscribe to InsideTexas.com today. Link in the description. Between the offseason comments and a close game last season, both teams are motivated. So who will end the season with bragging rights? Without further ado, let's get into it. Texas Tech was a dark horse candidate this season to really shine after an impressive eight wins in year one under McGuire. That didn't happen, but it's tough to do so when the most important position on the field has been in turmoil. Tech can't catch a break with their quarterbacks. Tyler Shuck went down again during the West Virginia game with a broken leg. That's the third straight year that serious injury derailed his season. Then you bring in second string Baron Morton and he sustains a shoulder injury versus Kansas State. So now third string Jake Strong comes in for two games before Baron Morton returns for week 10 to take over from there. Morton's still hurt, but he's working through the pain. The passing game is unsurprisingly inefficient this season with the trio of rotating quarterbacks. 95th in the nation in yards per pass, 76th in passing success rate, and 102nd in the nation in passing explosivity. This offense led the country in plays last year, but this season they are 14th in plays per game, having to slow things down a bit. Warren's an intriguing quarterback. I like his play style, his arm ability, and willingness to mix it up. But as we have seen so often this season, younger quarterbacks have to take their licks. In the gunslinger mold, he can make some plays out of thin air, but he needs to make sure the big-time throws and turnover-worthy play rate isn't similar. There's weakness in the deep game, ranking 12th on throws over 20 yards, but it's hard to get that chemistry with teammates when you weren't starting and dealing with injury. Intermediate, similar story with the 13th ranked completion rate, but still effective scoreboard-wise. Half of his touchdowns come between 10 to 20 yards. The non-negotiable in the Kitley offense is being consistent short, and Morton does do well here as the fifth most accurate passer at this range. This allows them to keep their tempo. He can try to do too much to extend plays, though, with a high 21% pressure to sack rate. He's just got to learn when to throw it away. But generally, I just see a young, talented quarterback that wants to make every play. But overall, Morton is the 15th of 19 Big 12 quarterbacks. 70% of Tech's offense is 11 and 10 personnel, so a lot of receiving threats and spreading it out. There's two receivers that get the bulk of the action and then a middle class of receivers that rotate throughout the game. It's a long list, but they all have their value. First in targets with 68 is the big 6'5", 220-pound outside threat, Jaron Bradley. He's that lengthy strider you want to throw it up to downfield. He's a problem in the red zone and has excellent body control for that build, but he's had a disappointing season this year only pulling in a poor 53% of his targets with a well below average yards per reception and yards after catch per reception. The NFL measurables are there and the wow plays are also there, just not the growth we expected this season. Currently, he's the 37th of 48 Big 12 receivers. Second in targets with 62 is the crafty slot receiver, Miles Price. He's been out since the Kansas game, which has been tough on the offense, but I'd imagine he'll be back for Texas. The 5'10", 190-pound senior is in his fourth year of seeing significant targets, and he's been consistent, catching 69% of his passes. He's your most utilized short-range guy, with 65% of his targets coming under 10 yards or behind the line on screens. His 10'6", 100-meter speed and years of reps allow for him to get to his spot efficiently, so he'll make some plays. But overall, he's the 21st of 48 receivers in the conference. Third in targets with 44 is another speedy inside receiver in Xavier White. Sure-handed, dependable dude pulling in a 7th best 71% of his targets. He can create space for underneath receivers running off safeties or go for a big gain ranking 3rd in the league in yards after catch per reception. But putting everything together overall, he's only 28th of 48 Big 12 receivers. Next up is yet another interior speed threat in the 5'9", 185-pound junior, Dre McRae. With 38 targets and track speed, he can get lost in the secondary for an easy deep shot or turn around quickly short for a gimme. Overall, 38th of 48 receivers in the league. 
Then you have the starting outside receiver, Koi Aiken, with 37 targets. He adds more size to a speed-focused group of receivers at 6'2", 210 pounds as a redshirt freshman. He has high expectations from the crazy numbers he put up in high school. But right now, he's best at using his body to shield the ball from corners on quick slants and outs and the occasional stop route. Overall, he's the 44th of 48 Big 12 receivers. And lastly, for the receivers, you have the 5'11", 185-pound Jordan Brown, who usually plays outside and can spell the bigger outside guys. He had a solid game versus UCF, and I'm interested to see his role if Miles Price doesn't return. Right now, he's ranked as 33rd of 48 receivers in the conference. But we also have some size on the interior. Tight end Mason Tharp finally returned versus UCF after suffering an injury early in the season. The 6'9", 270-pound giant is a mismatch versus anyone, and as long as you throw it in our solar system, he has the length to pull it down. Another tight end to watch out for is the 6'6", 260-pound Baylor Cup, who can use that bulk to make plays in the red zone. The Texas Tech offensive line is doing a slightly above average job holding up against the pass rush, ranking 6 of 14 Big 12 teams in unit pass blocking efficiency. Tech doesn't have any high performing pass blockers, but they do have a lot of top half guys, with left tackle Monroe Mills at 21st, rotational left guard Jacoby Jackson at 24th, injured starting left guard Cole Spencer at 26th, right tackle Caleb Rogers at 32nd, and center Dennis Wilburn at 39th of 84 total pass blockers. The Texas Tech run game improved since last season, moving up from 80th to 57th in yards per rush at 4.3. Fairly consistent as well, ranking 47th in success rate. The run game is the strength of this offense, and it's because of one guy. Taj Brooks is the soul of the offense, leading the entire league with 251 rushing attempts. Veteran back that plays angry and always seems to find a way to generate some extra yards, leading the entire country in missed tackles force. The knowledge gained from his experience and that stocky 5'10", 230-pound body make him tough to bring down. His non-volume stats are solid, but not in that elite tier. 11th in yards per attempt, 11th in yards after contact per attempt, and 15th in breakaway percentage. But with Texas Tech running about 38 times a game, that's enough leeway to allow him to make some big plays. Overall, he's the second graded running back of 27 in the Big 12. Having an older back that leads the league in missed tackles helps out a lot, but the offensive line generally does well, ranking 28th in line yards per rush. Their weakness is in short yardage, struggling to win the line of scrimmage as the 70th ranked line and power rushing success rate. Left guard Cole Spencer is the best run blocker ranked 9th, but he's been out a majority of the season, but he could return this week. Right tackle Caleb Rogers is 20th, but the remainder of the group is below average out of 83 run blockers. The keys for the Texas defense is to learn the lesson of last year's matchup. This is a quick-paced offense that is looking to beat you by increasing the opportunities they have on 3rd and 4th downs to tire you out. And they do well in this regard as the 51st ranked 3rd down offense and the 17th ranked 4th down offense. They require more attempts to score. Limit the attempts, limit the score. Taj Brooks is a critical factor, and shutting down the run game will force the offense to execute play after play with a young quarterback. Texas is the fifth-ranked rushing defense in the nation, but with Tech playing so many receivers, it does lighten the box, forcing D-line and linebackers to stay sound. In the secondary, look at the leverage pre-snap and know they're going to move to the opposite of that post-snap. When offenses move quickly, they have to simplify. So the right option is usually the easiest option. Jumping the ball will be valuable and generating turnovers will help to keep the ball away. Tech is going to spread you out and overload passing strengths with trips or quads. Fight through their screens and don't get beat to the spot and Tech can bog down. The Texas Tech offense has had its struggles this season with injuries, but they are still slightly above average overall, ranking 58th in the advanced metric OFEI. But that's not where their strength lies. Tech is actually better on the other side of the ball. But before we hit the defense, 
The sponsor of today's video is Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a skill based daily fantasy sports app where you can make college football player projections all season long. How does it work? You select two to six players and choose more or less on their prize pick projections. It could be passing yards, rushing yards, receiving yards, and more. And if those players score more or less than their prize pick projection, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. Just hop on the prize picks app or website, go to the college football tab and check out the player projections. It's a smooth process where you can make your entries in 60 seconds or less with fast withdrawals. It's that easy. As a first time depositor, use promo code Texas Homer and you will receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. That's double your money up to $100 for your first time. So sign up for prize picks, use promo code Texas Homer at sign up and add even more excitement to your game day. Link in the description. Defensive coordinator Tim DeRuiter's scheme is a 3-3-5 that utilizes a down outside linebacker most of the time, so it looks like a 4-2-5 in alignment. This flexibility allows for him to drop aid or generate interesting pressure variations that can confuse quarterbacks. Behind it, they like a lot of zone coverage. The Texas Tech run defense is an above average unit. 58th in opponent yards per rush, 53rd in defensive rushing success rate. But they are vulnerable to the big run, ranking 74th in defensive rushing explosivity. The defensive line isn't the strength, ranking 77th in defensive line yards, but the remaining position groups carry that load. Going off the tech depth chart, on the interior, starting defensive tackle Tony Bradford ranks 16th, and starting nose Jalen Hutchings ranks 27th of 52. But Hutchings went down with an injury last game, so as of writing this video, I don't know if he's going to play this week. On the exterior, starting outside linebacker, the one that can play down on the line, Joseph Adedire ranks the highest at 18th, and he's the only top half run stopper amongst the edges. The line isn't the productive part of the run game as they funnel running backs to the second level. The linebackers make it all work. Starting Will Jacob Rodriguez is finally back coming off of injury, and he's the second best run stopper in the conference. And starting Mike Ben Roberts ranks fourth of 47 Big 12 run stopping linebackers. It's an impressive group. In the secondary, starting corner Braylon Lux ranks third, and rotational corner Rayshad Williams ranks 17th of 48 run stopping corners. The safeties do their job with both starters in the top 10. Free safety Dadrian Taylor Demerson ranks second but he went down Saturday with a non-contact injury that didn't look good, so that's a huge loss. Strong safety C.J. Baskerville ranks fourth. Former Texas transfer nickel Tyler Owens is weak there, though, ranking 43rd of 56 safeties against the run, but Owens was out last week with injury as well, so Tex had a rough go health-wise. Texas Tech has struggled to turn pressures into sacks, ranking 109th in the nation in sacks per game but they do a good job of sending guys from different levels and speeding the quarterback's clock up. The interior is actually best in the pass game, with starting tackle Tony Bradford Jr. ranked 10th with 22 pressures and 4 sacks. Starting nose Jalen Hutchings ranks 18th with 20 pressures and 4 sacks as well, out of 49 interior pass rushers. At edge, they only have one above-average pass rusher, and surprise, surprise, he's been injured too. Outside linebacker Steve Linton is the highest graded pass rushing edge in the Big 12 with 19 pressures and 3 sacks, and he can likely return for the Texas game. The big 6'6", six 280-pound six, edge Miles Cole can make things happen as well with 24 pressures and 4 sacks on the year. He just has a low 9.2% win rate and that leaves him out of the top half. No starters at off-ball linebacker are above average getting after quarterbacks. They'll send them on pressures to heat you up, but the starters haven't recorded a sack. But to add to the confusion quarterbacks face, Tech will fire safeties as well, with strong safety C.J. Baskerville graded as the best pass rushing safety in the conference, with five hurries and one QB hit. Tech does their best work in pass coverage. Tech's coverage is the 36th in the nation for opponent yards per pass, 57th in passing success rate, and 23rd in defensive passing explosivity. Just a sturdy unit all around that makes it tough to find consistent success and they don't give you the easy out of hitting some explosive plays. But they are banged up. Will linebacker Jacob Rodriguez is 11th of 49 in pass coverage and Tech plays a lot of zone dropping linebackers deep, taking away throwing lanes. Starting corner Malik Dunlap ranks 9th, and he's been able to snag three picks. 
Rotational corner Rashad Williams barely makes the top half at 22 of 48 coverage corners. At safety, free safety Dadrian Taylor Demerson is second with an impressive four interceptions, and he's able to get from sideline to sideline super quick. But as mentioned earlier, he went down on Saturday. Strong safety C.J. Baskerville ranks 10th. An injured starting nickel Tyler Owens is underperforming once again, ranking 44th of 54 safety types in coverage. Overall, this is a good tech defense with respectable run numbers, but they're ultimately better against the pass when they're healthy. In totality, they're the 28th ranked defense in the country in DFEI. And Tech has played the 17th ranked strength of schedule this season, so they have faced some good offenses like Oregon, Kansas, Kansas State, and now Texas. The keys for the Texas offense. I was nervous about Baxter being the top back after Brooks went down, but he did an excellent job versus a good Iowa State defense, and Blue did his part situationally. A huge key to beating Tech is possessing the ball so they can't run a bunch of plays on offense, and a solid Texas run game helps that goal. So that was good to see, but if we do fall flat in that regard, then it's time to go good on good. The Texas passing offense versus Tech's pass coverage. Texas is going to have to pass against a good secondary and the injury of Tech's safety, Dadrian Taylor Demerson, looms large. But assuming they are at full health, Ewers can continue to display his growth in these past two seasons. Between Worthy, Sanders, and AD, that's a lot to handle for any secondary. Receivers are going to have to settle in the zones and Quinn will have to be on time. Luckily, Quinn is the best quarterback in the Big 12 in the intermediate game. And he takes care of the ball. If Tech's coverage all sinks back in zone, then we have some easier throws to make in front of the defense. Just take what they give you and hunt whatever matchup you like when it is time to go deep. This is our last regular season Big 12 opponent, and there's definitely no love lost between these schools. Tech, no matter their record, can make their season feel a lot better with a final win over Texas. And of course, Texas needs to secure that 11th win to punch their ticket to the Big 12 championship. With the game last season and all the offseason talk, this game should be a good one. So let's see how the season finale plays out this Friday night in Austin. Thanks for hanging out. Watch some more of my videos here. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you want to support Quality Texas content. As always, hook on.